Celebration Place. My name is Victoria. And as you can see, we just won the game, or actually lost, the game of mouse trap. And we lost because our mouse was trapped. And this is a type of what we call a Rube Goldberg machine. So a Rube Goldberg machine is an often very complicated and really wacky way of doing such a simple task. So for this, our task was to capture the mouse. But there's a much simpler way to do that than going through this set of chain reactions. So all Rube Goldbergs come with a chain reaction, which is setting off the first object, which then sets off the second and the third and so on, just like our dominoes. So I'm going to hit our first domino and all of our dominoes, except for the last one in this case, collapse. And by collapsing those dominoes, we've set off a chain reaction. We only touch the first one and then each of those next sets of dominoes collapse on their own. So a Rube Goldberg is a simple or a complex way of doing a simple machine. And they became pretty uh, popular over the last few years. And if you'd like to check out some, you can just do a quick YouTube search or even look for Joseph's machine on YouTube. They have some pretty cool videos. So for today's lesson, you're going to need different building materials from around your house. We recommend using things like books, masking tape, different sized balls. Here I have a, a soft bouncy ball, a soft ball, a wooden ball, scissors, construction paper, even an Easter egg is a good option, cups, and paper tubes. You can use tubes just like you, uh, your paper towel tubes that you can get from your recycling bin. So go ahead and grab those materials, pause the video, and come right back to us. All right, now that you have all your objects, let's start by looking at the energy transfer. So for energy transfer, we are transferring that energy from one object into another. So to show this, I've set up a book that I grabbed with a block and a cup at the bottom of the ramp. And then we're gonna use our ball. So by setting our ball at the bottom, let's let it go and see what happens to the cup. Well, the ball hit the cup, but there wasn't enough energy to knock the cup over. So let's see if by raising it, we can knock the cup over. There we go. So the amount of energy you put into the object is the amount of energy that can be transferred into another object. We can use this for our Rube Goldberg by maybe setting up a ramp that, and maybe having the cup knock off the table and hitting another object when it's done. So there's lots of ways we can use this for our Rube Goldberg, but it's often a good start since we have to have energy to start our reaction and a good sense of aim. It's important to note that during a Rube Goldberg machine, the energy has to come from somewhere. We can't create energy from nothing. So by putting our ball at the top of the ramp, we are able to create that energy through the use of gravity. So gravity is rolling the ball down and it's then hitting the cup, as long as we have good aim, which apparently I don't today. There we go. And that we are able to use that to our advantage. We can do that by adding some height to our Rube Goldberg machine. You can do that using your paper towel tubes or any other objects, including a kitchen table or a chair if your parents allow it. So now that we know about energy transfer, we can talk about predictable motion. So for predictable motion, we're gonna take a ball and an odd shaped object like a plastic egg. And we're gonna try and see if we can roll them both across the table in, a, in the path. So if I take my, actually let's move that. If I take my ball and roll it, it goes across the table. But can I predict that it's gonna go in the exact same place each time? It doesn't always. Ah, our ball's gonna run away. That's okay. So go ahead and try that at home. Roll your ball across a smooth surface and see if you can predict its motion. And if you can't, how could we make it easier to predict? To predict? So you could use rulers or popsicle sticks to create a path that your ball must take and make sure it always stays in the same. And we can then try that with our plastic egg. If I roll my plastic egg across the table, what happens? Well, it's not really round, so it doesn't go completely in a straight line. It wobbles a lot, but you can still make it go mostly in a straight line by using that same pathway. So we can make sure we can predict that motion. You have to be able to predict the motion to make your Rube Goldberg machine. Without that predictable motion and without the energy transfer, you can't make one reaction change the next reaction. Now that we've taken a look at energy transfer and prediction of motion, we need to talk about some different machines that can help us build our Rube Goldberg. 
So there are five different examples of a simple machine that we can use. And some of those are on our mousetrap game, like our lever here, think about a seesaw, and our screw, like the mousetrap. And then we also have other things like an incline plane here that we also see here and here on the mousetrap game. Um, a wheel and axle, think about your bicycle. That bicycle is attached to your wheel with that axle piece that runs through the middle. And the last but not least, a pulley. So all of these are different ways that we can look at simple machines and use them to help us make our Rube Goldberg machine. So make sure you get all those supplies together and if you've had some ideas, grab those extra things and come right back because we're gonna start building our Rube Goldberg. All right, now that you have all your materials and you've got some ideas in your head, I want you to think of a task you can accomplish. For example, you could want to turn off the light switch from across the room. Now, if you think about the simplest way to do that, it involves you getting up and turning off the light switch. But that's not really fun, is it? So if I wanted to turn off my light switch, I would take a book, I'd throw it at a shoe, the shoe would then roll and hit a ball, that ball would hit a book, the book would hit a larger book for a domino effect, that larger book would hit a broom that my jacket was on and the jacket would fall and turn off my light switch. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this. You can get as simple or as complicated as you like. Now, when you're building your Rube Goldberg machine at home, make sure to include at least five different steps and at least two simple machines. And when you get it all to put together, make sure that you take a video of it, put it on social media and tag us in it so we can see your cool contraptions. But let's take a look at mine that I made today. Fingers crossed it's gonna work. Ha! So my task today was to get some confetti to launch into the air. And as you notice, the end of it didn't work very well. But when you do this, you have to make sure that you're testing every single step of the way. And I didn't test that last step. I was just relying on a little bit of ingenuity and, and a big fat chance that it would actually work. And that's okay. We have to practice things as we do them in science and have a lot of fun when we do it as well. So I'm gonna go clean up my mess that I made with confetti and you guys are gonna go build your Rube Goldberg machine. We can't wait to see what you post on social media and thanks for joining us today.